or maybe they've captured their data but they haven't decided to share their data. And so the comment was made, well, why do we have to wait? Maybe we have need of access to those data and we would prioritize that even if the institution that houses those data doesn't. And so then the question was, can a group of African institutions find funding for and get consent from the owner institutions to do this sort of project? The answer was yes, but it all began with a debate at a previous course. So take this seriously. So essentially, here's what we're going to do in the inventories course. Uh, today, we are up to right here, here, sorry. Um, and so we'll do some introductions. We will talk briefly about what is an inventory versus what is a sample. And then we're just going to go through some examples, which is to say um, our instructors will give you some views of their previous work at sites around Africa or around the world. Day two, we're going to spend the morning essentially talking science. Why do you do these inventories? You know, why are they interesting? Why are they relevant? And then the afternoon, remember I said there's a lot of logistics that goes into this. Um, day two afternoon is just we split into our three groups, plants, birds, herps, and each group talks through their equipment and their needs, and we have this, 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 uh-oh, we don't have this. So I'm sure there'll be multiple trips to the market to get buckets or chairs or whatever it is that's missing. I know we have, for birds, we have a long list of things that we need. So day two is, is some science and some logistics. Day three will be very, very focused on data recording. You know, essentially, we're going to be out at Corp. There's going to be really cool nat natural diversity all around us. And we could just come home and tell our families and colleagues, it was great. You know, look at this photograph. And I saw this. But that's not usable information. So how do you turn those experiences when you're out at a really neat place into data? In the afternoon, we're going to do an exercise with GPS units. And I've been making fun of the other instructors because they need this exercise as much as you guys do. Um, I've been challenging several of them to remain unnamed Rafe, uh, <laughs> because he doesn't know where the cable, the data cable for his GPS unit is. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> so we're gonna, be, we're gonna be going just a bit deeper. I'm not gonna go into you know, really precise georeferencing where you need a base station and things like that, uh, but we're just gonna go a little bit deeper into GPS and trying to get you guys a couple basic skills and a couple insights into avoiding overinterpreting those data. Um, then day four will go deeper into analysis. Um, so essentially when you're writing that paper about your inventory, what sorts of data analyses do you do along the way? Um, and we'll end day four with an exercise with a program called Estimate S. And I think you guys have all at least tried to install that. Uh, and we'll, we'll solve those problems for the, the last few. Um, and that's the end of this course, which is to say biodiversity inventories. And then Friday and Saturday will be a species descriptions course. As of day three, Mark and Jacob are going to take off for Corrup National Park and essentially get things set up. Uh, partly get the camp set up and partly get the bird effort set up because um, we're very much hoping to do a pretty good job of, of an inventory and basic collection at that site. 
so a few more days will make a big difference. So that's essentially what we're hoping to do in this four-day course. You all have already had a basic taste of what we'll do. If you can, be here 8.30, 8.45. I know some of you are coming from far off places within Buea or even Limbe. So get here if you can before 9. Those of you who are staying here at the hotel, be here ready to work at 9 a.m. We'll take a break 11 to 11.30. We'll have lunch 1 to 2. We'll take a break 3.30 to 4. And you know we put, we'll stop at 5, but if you're having fun, there's no reason we, ha we have to stop. And if you have any needs, if you have any worries, or if we're doing something that's not working, just let Kate or me know. These are your instructors. Um, Moses was a trainee and has now transitioned because he's been such a, a positive force in all but one of these courses. He's the trainee who's been to the most courses. And the only reason he didn't go to South Africa was that South Africa apparently didn't believe that a Cameroonian, albeit equipped with lots of letters of support and uh, letters attesting that he would not be a financial burden on the South African government, the South African High Commissioner here in Yaoundé decided that he would probably want to stay. And so they didn't give him a visa. Um, I can give an introduction to the three of you, or you can when we do introductions. Which do you prefer? You're more entertaining. Go ahead. I, I have, you guys are amazing. I wouldn't trust me, but I have, no, I have nothing. Yeah, I have. We just wait for the hotel room, so the good news for you guys is I have nothing prepared. So uh, I'll give my introduction, you can add to it. Um, Dave Blackburn I met when he came to KU as a postdoc, and it was a complete pleasure. He works on stuff ranging from paleontology to neontology and uh, everything from tropical rainforest to the middle of the Sahara Desert. Um, he moved on to the California Academy of Sciences where he is assistant curator, associate, associate curator, I would, that's why I paused, associate curator of herpetology at the California Academy of Sciences, which is one of the premier standalone museums on the west coast of the US. Um, Rafe, I met when he uh, came to interview at uh, the University of Kansas. I might have been away when you interviewed, but after he took the job. Uh, but it turned out that we had been to the same university in southwestern Ohio. Um, and so we are part of a growing group of Miami University graduates who are at the University of Kansas. Um, but Rafe has worked for decades going on centuries in the Philippines and elsewhere across uh, Southeast Asia. Um, and it was very, uh, a huge amount of fun for me that he um, opened doors for work in the Philippines at the University of Kansas. And so I got to go back to the Philippines with him in 2006 after 14 years away from the country, which was a lot of fun. Um, and R Rafe has now overseen a program that built literally an unmatched sampling of the terrestrial vertebrates of the Philippines. Um, Mark, there's way too much to say um, because I've known him longer. Suffice it to say that in 1993, I was offered a job at the University of Kansas. And I kind of knew that Mark had also been offered a job at the University of Kansas. And so I called him up, or he called me, and we shook hands over the phone. And it was basically, if you go, I'll go. And if you don't go, I won't go. Because we both had jobs that were decent jobs, very good jobs, and wonderful collections. Um, and I, know, I knew who the number two candidate was for his job. And I thought, if Mark goes, I'll go. And if Mark doesn't go, I'll go. I will not go. Um, 
and we've had a great 20 years working together. Uh, the Corrup outing will be a monumental occasion because the two of us have been working together literally daily for 21 years and we've never been in the field together. Uh, we've always placed such a premium on expedition leaders that it was kind of a waste for us to go into the field together. Uh, but this will be, this will be our, our uh, debut as a field team. Um, and then you guys mostly know Moses, but I met Moses two years ago. Uh, he's not here because he's in Douala taking care of passports for a bunch of our outside of Cameroon visitors. Um, but Moses was a standout uh, participant in the Nairobi courses and has just been a joy to work with for the last two and a half years. I now have the privilege to be his co-supervisor in his PhD at a university in South Africa, even though they didn't let him in. Um, and it's a pleasure watching him develop as a doctoral student as well. Um, we also have Jacob here, and Jacob is a master's student um, in the broader bird group at the University of Kansas. He's actually studying with you remember I showed you all the Mexico information transition. He's studying with one of the major architects of that transition, a guy named Jorge Soberon. But Jacob is working for his master's degree. He's working on uh, an analysis, essentially, of species level biogeography of hummingbirds across the Americas. And it'll be a quite a unique analysis once he finishes it. And at the same time, he's been keeping up pretty intense interests in Central Africa. So he's been in Equatorial Guinea and here in Cameroon in recent years. And then it's Kate and me. Um, Kate identified herself as generally interested in biodiversity and joined the bird division a few years ago. We've kind of figured out that in her heart she's really a herpetologist, but uh, she has done various things such as Peace Corps in Gambia for a couple of years and a zoo curator of crocodilians in Florida. Um, Not curator, keeper. Sorry, keeper. Yeah, I don't want to get you into any trouble. Um, and Kate, given her Africa experience and her clear love for the continent, I drafted her early on in this uh, program and in my last semi-annual report to JRS Foundation, I said, will you please start calling her co-director because her role in this program has been that big. And then the most important people in the picture are the two granddaughters, um, Kalesi and Daniris, who've been around for about as long as this program has been around. And so they've been a continual source of fun. Um, and Kalesi, in particular, there have been several points in her life where, because of this program, she knew me more over Skype from Africa than in person. And that has been pointed out to me by my family on many occasions. 